The key to the growth of Las Vegas was really World War II. Once again, fighting men stand ready to carry on America's oldest military tradition, to attack, to attack the forces that threaten us. With all the men and all the equipment, we can hurl against them. In World War II, we were filled with defense workers. The newly opened basic magnesium town site in what became Henderson was an important supplier of magnesium for airplanes being made in Southern California. There was also a gunnery school, what is today Nellis Air Force Base, was the Army Gunnery School. There was no Air Force until 1947. The Army handled the flying, the dropping of bombs in World War II, and they trained their gunners uh, here in Vegas, in what would be today North Las Vegas. And the federal government will become, for Southern Nevada, a goose that lays the golden egg. By the end of World War II in 1945, Las Vegas's population had nearly doubled jumping to almost 15,000 people. This meant that the small desert town needed a plan to deliver water to the surge of new residents. And so in the late 1940s, the Las Vegas Valley Water District was created, which is bonding power taxes, many of the people in the valley, and that money was used to build a water line from basic magnesium, which had its water line to Lake Mead, up to Las Vegas. In addition to new residents, the war also brought tourism. Each week, thousands of defense workers from Southern California traveled on the recently paved Highway 91 to enjoy the casinos on their weekends off. At this time, the Las Vegas Chamber of Commerce began courting Thomas Hull, the owner of the popular chain of El Rancho Hotels in California, to build a resort-sized hotel on Fremont Street. Noticing the amount of traffic coming up from California, Hull decided to build his resort on Highway 91, making the El Rancho Vegas the first hotel on what would later become the famous Las Vegas Strip. Well, the early casinos are small-time operations. They're real casinos, and they have the slot machine or two, and they have some tables, and there's often sawdust on the floors. But the El Rancho Vegas was a step up in both size and class. While still more western in theme, it catered towards high comfort, offering air-conditioned rooms, a pool area, buffets, and live entertainment by the top performers of the day. And so what he did was he created the model for the future strip, uh, put casino gambling in a resort hotel. This model would be emulated in the mid and late 1940s at both the Last Frontier and the Thunderbird. Even mobster Benjamin Bugsy Siegel followed suit. After a failed attempt at buying the El Rancho Vegas, Siegel took hold of Hollywood businessman Billy Wilkerson's plans to build a new hotel on the Strip. Wilkerson envisioned the Strip as becoming an American Monte Carlo, with his hotel leading the way. Siegel's result was the Flamingo, which replaced Las Vegas's common Western theme with the glitz and glamour of a luxury Hollywood resort. The Flamingo opened December 26, 1946, and opening night was a disaster. It was the worst time of year to open a casino because back then people did not go to Las Vegas between Christmas and New Year's the way they do now. The hotel really wasn't completed, so a lot of people came in there, got all the free food they could, gambled and won a lot of money, and then went somewhere else. After a rocky start that included construction costs skyrocketing millions of dollars over budget and Siegel's murder in June of 1947, the Flamingo would take on new management and become extremely profitable for its mafia backers in New York. Cause I've got trouble, trouble, trouble. It seems there's always trouble Every time that I speak my mind 